We are going to look at division by fractions today. Now, division and multiplication, you know, have got a very close relationship. And this close relationship is going to be crucial in figuring out how we do division by fractions. So let's remind ourselves a little bit about division with some simple stuff we know how to do easily. For example, if we look at something like 10 divided by 2, what we can see this as meaning is we can see this as telling, asking us how many 2s are there in 10. So how many 2s will we find in 10? And the answer to that is 5. Now I want you just to notice something quite interesting here. If I take 10 and I multiply it by a half, I get exactly the same answer. And what is the relationship between 2 and a half? Well, 2 we know we can just write as 2 over 1. And a half is just this upside down. And the more technical word for upside down is reciprocal. OK, I just want us to observe that for now. Let's go on to the next thing and we'll see how this pattern continues. If we look at 6 divided by a quarter, we can understand this in the same way as we could understand 10 divided by 2 is asking us how many 2s are there in 10. We can see 6 divided by a quarter is asking us how many quarters are there in 6. So we're asking ourselves, how many quarters can we find in 6 holes? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we want to know how many quarters there are in those 6 holes. To help me answer the question, 6 divided by a quarter, what I've done is I've taken those 6 holes and I have divided each of them up into quarters. So now I can, I can easily answer the question, how many quarters are there in 6? Well, in each one I see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 quarters. So I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 as my answer. So if I want to ask myself how many quarters are there in 6, the answer is 24. Can you see that this is exactly the same as if I had said 6 multiplied by 4. Note again the pattern that we have. 6 divided by a quarter gives us exactly the same as multiplying by quarter turned upside down or the reciprocal of a quarter which is 4 over 1. Okay. I'm asking myself now 6 divided by 3 quarters, and what does that mean? Well, I can write it out as saying, how many 3 quarters are there in 6? All right. So I'm trying to ask myself, how many 3 quarters will I find in 6? Well, what I can do here is I can say, OK, let me have a look at what 3 quarters looks like. There is three quarters, right? It's literally one, two, three of the quarters, three quarters. Now, how many of that little sort of three block thing will I find in the six holes altogether? Well, I can literally go ahead and count it up. I've already found one lot of three quarters. Then here is the second lot of three quarters. Here is the third. Here is the fourth. There's the fifth. The sixth the seventh lot, and the eighth lot. And so I can answer my question, what is 6 divided by 3 quarters, by saying that, that answer, the answer to that is that there are, the, there are 8 3 quarters in 6, so 6 divided by 3 quarters is equal to 8. Now have a quick look here. If I do what I've been doing all along and say 6 multiplied by the reciprocal of 3 quarters, in other words, the upside down of 3 quarters, 6 times 4 over 3. 6 fours are 24 over 3 and 24 over 3 is 8. Again we have this pattern. 6 divided by 3 over 4 is exactly the same as 6 times 4 over 3. And this is the key to fraction division. The relationship between division and multiplication means that if we're dividing by 3 quarters it's exactly the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So division of fractions is going to be very easy for us. We just turn it into a multiplication. 
Okay, now that we've understood how division by fractions work, we don't need to do all that work. If we're faced with a division sum, sum when we've got fractions, all we have to do is turn it into a multiplication and use the reciprocal. So, for example, if we're dividing by two-thirds, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into multiplying by the reciprocal, turn it upside down, which is 3 over 2. And we know how to do multiplication with fractions easily. We've been doing it for ages. Um, and again, I like to cancel before I multiply so I don't have a lot of work to do. 11 times 1 is 11 and 4 times 2 is 8. So my answer here is 11 over 8. Now there's quite a cute little rhyme um, and a song which you're going to watch in the next video which helps us remember what we need to do when we're dividing with fractions. So let me just tell you what it is. It is when we're dividing with fractions we do keep, change, flip. In other words, we keep the first fraction exactly the same, we change the multiplication, the division into a multiplication, and we flip. In other words, we turn upside down the final, the last fraction. So you keep this here, you change that into a times, and you flip that. So if you remember the little rhyme, keep, change, flip, it helps you to remember what you need to do when you're dividing fractions. Keep the first one, change the division to multiplication, and flip the final fraction. Okay, so let's give you a chance to practice keep, change, flip. What I want you to do is to do this calculation here. The very first thing you need to do is you're faced with mixed numbers. As with everything else we've done with mixed numbers, just turn them into improper fractions. Once you've done that, you do your division by using the keep, change, flip idea. Try it now on your homework books and we'll go over it. Okay, so first, oh, let me get a pen. First step was to turn this thing into um, improper fractions. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 gives me 15. And then 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 gives me 5. So I've got 15 over 4 divided by 5 over 2. My little rhyme says keep, change, and then flip. And so I'm faced with a very ordinary multiplication of fractions. And what I want to do to make sure I don't have to do very big and ugly multiplications, I'm just going to do some cancelling first. And so I get 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. And my answer is 3 over 